This tutorial looks at how to create a scrolling background in Scratch. It's one of at least three ways that you could do it. So to start with, I'm just going to go up and modify the default cat sprite. First of all, I'm going to give it a more meaningful name. Then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller by going into Costumes, then Edit, and pressing the, pressing the Shrink button one, two, three times. And I'll do the same for the second costume. Remember having two costumes here, flicking between the two, is how we get the impression that our cat is actually moving. Now in this particular method of creating a scrolling background, I'm not going to use the stage at all. Instead I'm going to create separate background sprites. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new sprite zoom out as far as I can because that means whatever I paint on the stage here is going to be the same size in my program let's say I need a ground I want sky and now I want a few other things like some platforms and maybe a little tower or something. So notice it looks very similar to the previous exercise at the stage but this time we're not so worried about simulating gravity as such um, we'll include that, but what we really want is to be able to extend our background beyond this single window. So if I press OK, that now appears on our screen. Now unfortunately the cat has disappeared as well. And that's because everything you place on uh, when you create new sprites is kind of like placing one bit of paper on another. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the, scat on the cat and add some code that as soon as the game starts the cat is always going to be in front and there we go the next thing I'm going to do is um, create a variable called scroll x and it's for all sprites, press OK. This is what I'm going to use to manipulate the background sprites as they move horizontally left to right. So on the background sprite, and we need to add some code. As soon as play is clicked, we want to make sure that the background sprite, its y-axis is set to zero means it's going to stay in the same place all the time when we do this on all of the background sprites. Then we need a forever loop. And this time we need to set the x-axis. We're going to use some operators here. First of all we're going to use the plus. So that's, we're going to set scroll x, whatever the x position of um, the background is, we're going to add it to the result of 480, the full width of the screen, times 0. Now if I go up and name this background sprite BG0, that's the way I'm going to reference each of my sprites. My next one will be BG1, and then the code for the second background sprite will be 480 times 1, as we'll soon see. So now let's get things to move on the cat, remembering that all this code is on your handout as well. Let's say separate it with another when player's clicked. 
and what we want is continuously check for the forever loop. If when the on the cat if the right arrow is pressed then change the value of the scroll X variable by let's say negative three. Now why is it negative? Well, we would normally go in a positive number from the middle of the screen along the x-axis, but if the cat's moving along from left to right, we actually want the background to move from right to left in the opposite direction. And that's where we get that real sense of movement. It's not just the cat that's moving, it's the background that's moving. So if we do the same sort of thing to cater for the opposite direction, if the left key is pressed to move the cat, then we want to change that scroll x by a positive number this time. So in other words, the background's moving in the opposite direction to the cat. Now let's play it and see. The cat moves to the right, so and the background moves to the left. The cat moves to the left, the background moves to the right. What I want to do is go about halfway along and then I'm going to press stop. Now I'm going to create a new sprite. This is my second background sprite. So we zoom out again. And it would help if I knew how far I'd gone up, but never mind, let's just change it so we can see an obvious change. From one sprite to the next. This one I'm not going to have any platforms. Now you can see here the second background sprite which I'm going to rename BG1 is overlapping the first one. So because I've got the first one halfway across the screen what I can do is click and drag and kind of just stitch them together. Now you can see my the level of my ground isn't quite the same. That's all right for now. I would have, in a proper game, taken more note of that. Now all I have to do is take the code that was on BG0, the first background, click and drag and let it go over the second background called BG1. And then in BG1's code, I'm just going to change that it's 480 times 1 this time to make sure that it's this code is referring to the sprite called BG1. Now when we press play, if we go left, the whole thing moves left. If we go right, the whole thing moves right. Now you can see a little bit of a glitch there. I've got um, uh, a space appears. And that can simply be fixed just by stopping the game and then clicking and dragging and moving the um, second background, BG1, just more to the left. Bit of trial and error to make sure that um, everything's aligned correctly.